Hey guys, Bluff Monkey back again with another video for Sonic Academy and today I want to talk a little bit about psychology. Uh, not so much psychology, but just it's th th this conversation, this chat, I want to kind of impart some wisdom, let's, let's call it wisdom, about some of the things you can do to enhance your career that aren't connected with the actual making of the music, okay? So we're not going to talk about technical things. We're going to talk about some of the things that you can do, some of the behavior, behaviors that you can impart upon yourself that will help you a great deal, and I do mean a great deal, further on down the path. I know some of you want to make this into a career, it's not just a hobby for you, so let's dive into this now. Okay, I've made notes and coffee. So there's quite a few things I want to talk about. Um, the first thing really is the gear that you use. Um, now, I, I would imagine for the vast majority of you, you're going to be using software. And this has been discussed time and time again. Um, but just to touch briefly on which software you use, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever. The only criteria you should really be focusing on is which software suits your workflow the best. Um, so I started out on Cubase. Actually, I tried FL Studio first, which is it's a great tool. I just couldn't get on with the way it worked though. Uh, I then moved on to Cubase 10, 12 years ago. Um, and eventually I learned to like Ableton Live, which is just for me such a fast, especially for doing tutorial videos and getting ideas down and doing sound design demos. Um, it's such a fast workflow, but that's what suits me. I know a lot of people despise Ableton Live. So for me to say to you Ableton Live is the best is just nonsense because it's not. Uh, it just works for me. And th again, this is the only criteria you should be using to choose software. What works for you? Um, and on top of that, I, I would suggest just don't install or download too much stuff. Now this is a trap and a pitfall that I think everybody falls into to start with, uh, especially early on in your musical career. You, you start to look at, okay, this is my favorite producer for this genre, what does he or she use? And you think that if you download the 12 plugins that they use all the time, then you will glean results similar to them. And that's just not how it works. Uh, what happens is you, you have a load of stuff installed on your computer, most of which you don't really know how to use. Um, and you spend a lot of your time just trying to figure out how these things work and why they work this way. Um, and it's much better to hone your attention, hone your focus on the tools that you like that work best for you. And it might take you a few years to figure these things out. It might take you a couple of years to figure out what you like. Um, we'll touch on this later, but it does take quite a long time to find your, your niche, right? Um, and connected with this is the idea that you should never use cracked or pirated software. Now, leaving aside the moral viewpoint, um, you, you hear people argue that, oh, I don't make any money out of music, so why should I pay for it? Mm, that's not how this works. But it, it ties in with this idea that you'll end up having too much stuff, none of which, none of which you really know how to use. And I think there's also this, you know, going back to the word psychology, if you if you pay for something, or even if it's free and you take the time to da download and install it, if it's not just like a, a massive grab of stuff, a grab of pirated software, you don't really care what it is, you just download it because you can. If you actually choose what you're using or pay for what you're using, you're far more likely to invest the time and, and the mental energy to learn how it works. Um, and again, this is something I've seen time and time again. So th the main choice is which door you use. And for the most part, you can probably do 95% of what you need to do with the tools included in the door. You don't need lots of other plugins, but sometimes you'll find a few that do work for you aside from the stock plugins in the door. Um, and then one last point I want to make, when you do find your software, when you do find your workflow, it's so important to start working as early as possible from left to right. It's much easier 
to just add loads and loads of crap to an idea that you have. But what happens is your ears become very attuned to what you're listening to very quickly. Um, and this is one of the reasons why you can be working on something late at night and think it sounds like the best thing in the world. And when you wake up in the morning, it sounds like utter shite. It's because your ears got used to it the night before. They haven't had a break from what you were doing. And when you start adding more and more things to, let's say, an 8 or 16 bar loop, which we've all done, when you start adding more and more things to it, your ears say to you, your, your brain kind of says to you, okay, this is how it should be. And it's very difficult to start expanding ideas out then because your brain has, has got this chunk of 10 or 12 channels that it thinks are it, right? So the sooner you can work left to right, the better. And I would, I would also say that almost don't worry about how things sound. When you're just starting out, don't worry about how a mix sounds. Don't worry about whether it works. Just get the thing finished. Um, even if it's crap, doesn't matter. G get it finished. If you start starting tracks from beginning to end, finishing them um, is by far the fastest way to learn because you're going to be learning 10 or 20 things on that journey rather than just trying to squeeze everything together in a loop. So that's all I really want to say about software and how you use it for now. Um, but yeah, just keep things as simple as you possibly can for as long as possible. Right, what should you focus on? You got your software, you know what you want to use, you like plugin X, you like door Y, um, you're happy with that, so what should you focus on first? Okay, this is gonna be controversial, but I always advise people to focus on being a musician before you focus on being an engineer. Um, and there's two reasons for that. Now, the first reason is, it's very difficult to just pick up the skills of being a musician as you go. It's something that you really have to focus and practice on. And you've, you've probably, a lot of you have probably heard of this 10,000 hour rule where you have to practice something for 10,000 hours to become good at it. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that the numbers are accurate, but the idea that it takes a long time to become good at something is absolutely sound. Now, in, in terms of learning how to mix and learning how to be an engineer, the technical side of it, that you can, your brain will pick that up over time. Um, as you become more attuned to the tracks that you're making and as you become more attuned to, to different elements of a track as you're adding them, your brain will naturally, your ears and your brain form a kind of muscle memory and you'll start to hear more and more detail. So what you can hear today and the decisions you make today you probably won't be making the same decisions in a year or two because something's changed, something's rewired in your brain. Um, and a good example of that is, is compression. When you first start using compressors, it's very difficult to really, if they're properly level matched, A, a and B, between the compressor being on and off, it's sometimes quite difficult to actually hear what it's doing. Um, and it does take your, your muscle memory, this muscle memory, a long time to pick up on it. And not only that, it's how compressor on channel A effects channel B, C, D. Um, and that, that does come over time. But in terms of being a musician, in terms of actually getting your brain to get things like scales and intervals and rhythm and the relationship between one scale and another scale, that's something you really need to practice. And I would put physical practice in terms of playing scales and learning how to play an instrument way ahead of theory. Because again, theory is just an idea in your mind. It's not rewiring your brain in any way. It's just knowledge, okay? Um, but when you practice that theory with your hands and you start playing scales, it doesn't matter whether it's a piano or a guitar or, or, or any instrument really. Again, your brain starts to rewire itself in a more musical way. And this is something that uh, I think is overlooked because it is, it's very time consuming. Please trust me, it's worth it in the end. There's, there's no substitute to learning how to actually play an instrument. The muscle memory that's formed in your brain is invaluable. And um, again, as soon as we're talking about uh, a career, something longer term, uh, you know, I'm not talking about specific technical tips here. I've seen a lot of people who start out 
in dance music, so that could be trance, techno, whatever, house music. Um, and their career over the years, over five or ten years, naturally veers them towards doing music for film and TV. And this musical education that you give yourself, this ability to be a musician, will serve you so well in the future. So you try and look at it as an investment. Um, sure you can learn the technical things alongside becoming a musician but in some respects you have to you have to take the technical knowledge for granted this is something you, you need to learn anyway um, you can make music without being a musician but you are always going to be limiting yourself um, and it might sound like a pretentious thing to say but I don't mean it to sound pretentious you will always be limited by the ability of yourself to switch between various styles of music and and the more music you learn um, when you're learning to play a piano for example you you might learn some classical stuff some jazz stuff um, you may never make any jazz music but there's so much information being squeezed into your brain about chords and melody and um, chord changes you have no idea when you may use that knowledge in the future and it's it's subliminal too so um, yeah, that's always my advice and advice I will stick to forever. The next thing I want to talk about is feedback. So feedback is, the way to get feedback is connected with another important subject which we'll come to towards the end of this video. Um, but there are various places where you can get feedback on your music. Now, there's one thing I would like you to think about now and never do, and that is be one of those people that just throws links to their tracks on various places that they don't really know anybody and just expect strangers to give you their time and, and information and suggestions. Don't be that guy, please, or girl. Um, I would strongly recommend that you get involved with various communities online communities um, one of the best ones that I found and in fact I've made some connections there again something we'll come back to later um, is the KVR forum I'll put it up on the screen somewhere now the KVR forum has a section called the music cafe which is one of the most populated and used music feedback uh, resources I have ever found um, I used to belong to the Anjuna Beats forum as well when it was around, it's no longer around and of course Sonic Academy have their own forum too but KVR is the one that's always populated, always busy. Now they're not really geared towards EDM at all, it's, it's a far more eclectic mix of music there, uh, people making rock, cinematic music, some trance, um, but if you get involved in that section of the forum you will always have somebody that's willing to talk about what you've done and what you perhaps haven't done properly. Um, there's also the infinite resource of Facebook groups these days, but they tend to be they, they tend to have the same kind of dynamic. Um, and it's, it's that thing I mentioned before where people they won't get involved. They'll just drop links to their stuff. Oh, feedback, feedback, give me feedback. Um, and you won't get anything useful out of that. You'll just get people being annoyed at your apparent spam. Now, I've talked about making contacts. You will find that if you become involved in a community, you will automatically and naturally start to be drawn towards certain people in that group. Maybe they make the same kind of music as you. Maybe they're at the same level as you. Maybe um, you like what they do and you want some information from them. But this is a two-way street and you need to look at this as a two-way street. And when you do get the feedback, it's important that you try and focus on what you've decided are your weak spots. Okay. So if, if one person says this part of your track I don't like, doesn't matter. This is a subjective thing as much as anything. But if you keep hearing the same advice um, from various different people, and again, this is why you get involved in the community because you will get more advice, more than just one person. Uh, you may find that there's three or four people that say, you know, have a look at this little thing here. And if that keeps happening, write it down and say, okay, 
I've had feedback that I need to work on this element of my music. And it can be a very, very valuable tool, uh, something you may have never picked up on yourself, but you may find that people with a little bit more experience than you, or a lot more experience than you, um, are able to get you to where you need to be much faster than if you were just bashing it out on your own. Let me rephrase that. Um, and again, connected with something I was saying before, working left to right and finishing tracks, try not to post works in progress because that becomes almost like a little psychological addiction uh, where you're constantly trying to rush things to a state where you can get them online so that you can get the attention that you feel that your music deserves. Um, there is a little kind of serotonin boost in getting that attention. It's the same thing as checking Facebook posts, you know, oh, I've got to check, I've got to check. It's all just try not to get involved in that. If you're going to post something, post it finished um, and listen to the feedback on the finished track. You'll get a lot more um, results from posting a finished track than posting a work in progress. Nobody cares about a work in progress, only you do. So, And that's the same for everybody. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's, it's really, you know, you, you want to get involved in the community, community aspect of certain resources online as soon as possible. KVR will be the first one to go to. Um, then try and look for Facebook groups. I'm not going to suggest any Facebook groups because I don't really, I don't really use Facebook for feedback at all. Um, but the resources will be out there. Check the rules on Facebook groups. Don't be the one that you know. If a Facebook group says don't post your music and then you post your music, you know, don't be that guy. All right. Okay. So when it comes to releasing music, now. It's very easy to release music these days. Very, very, very easy. There are thousands of labels out there and there's hundreds of different ways of doing it. Um, you can even release yourself. But one thing I would suggest to you, okay, is if you have a particular style or genre of music that you like making um, and there are artists that you aspire to, find out what labels they're on and aim as high as possible, all right? I am of the belief that it's far more valuable for you to wait a couple of years if necessary and release on the label that you want to release on than release 10 or 12 tracks over the next couple of years with labels that can't possibly or, or, or possibly can't provide you with the exposure and results that you need okay and what I'm trying to say in a nice way is there's a lot of charlatans out there um, who aren't really going to provide you with any meaningful um, resources for getting your music to the people. Now, the main thing you want from a label is their audience, okay? And if it's a small label that's releasing mediocre tracks, they are going to have no audience. No matter what they say, no matter what they promise, they may have 50 or 100 people who buy some of their records some of the time. Um, and it's it's kind of a road to nowhere. Where has it really got you? A uh, perfect example is about 12 years ago, whenever the Anjuna Beats forums was very active, um, I would regularly talk to this one guy in particular. He was very young. He was a teenager at the time. Um, but he was he was constantly posting these finished tracks, improving all the time. And he said, um, my main goal is to get onto Anjuna Beats, or Anjuna Deep, in fact, I think it is. Um, funny story, he ended up buying some speakers I was selling. Uh, but now he is one of their main artists. He's, a, he's on Anjuna Deep now. It took him five or six years, which I think is about right. But he got onto Anjuna Deep. He DJs, he releases music. Um, and he's, you know, whenever his name's mentioned, people go weak at the knees. So from being somebody that didn't really know what they were doing um, to, to being on his, his, his dream label, took five or six years. And I want you to look at this as a more long-term thing. It's very easy, again, in the days of social media and instant gratification to want to have your stuff out there immediately. But try and sit back a little bit. Try and be a little bit more pragmatic about it and a little bit more mindful about exactly what it is you want. And if you want that big deal with the big label just wait until you get there you will get there if you keep practicing you will get there but the the little steps in between aren't always the right decisions to make you know these these smaller labels that will promise you something that will get your music out there 
there's almost no value in it a lot of the time. I'm not saying all the time, I don't want to make this a black and white thing, but aim as high as you possibly can and work your bollocks off until you get there, right? Um, it will give you far more satisfaction being on that big label. This is potentially the big one. Okay, now, even <clears throat> at the beginning of your career, you're still learning, you've made some tracks, um, you have your resources for feedback, you're starting to meet like-minded people. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to now start building your network and nurturing your network and your contacts. So I, I spent a lot of time on various forums about 12 years ago, ago or more. Um, just as a, an added piece of information, my music career actually goes back a lot further than that. I was in a band as a teenager and I, I made music and released tracks on white labels in the early 90s. Um, but there was no, the music industry didn't work the same way then as it does now. Um, and there are infinitely more opportunities to make money directly and indirectly from the music business these days. Um, that's the good news. But you have to concentrate on some things that aren't directly related to the music you're ma making as well. And building up your contact list is one of them. That old saying is not what you know, it's who you know. I would argue it matters more now than ever. So my, my online music career um, as such really started around 2010, 2012 when I, I really started getting into making music again after a bit of a break and, and learning more about software and how it works. Um, but this is when I started to make contacts and the reason I'm, I'm expressing such a, a, a strong opinion about how important these things are is that the contacts I made then a lot of them are still with me now and we are firing work at each other on a, on a monumental rate. Um, just to give you an example, one of the guys I, I met, um, I've already told you about the one that's on Anjuna Deep. Um, we are still in contact and I've actually just got him a gig, some work. Um, I am in contact with another guy who does Goes producing, he does. He he writes tracks for some big, big, big names. Um, and he's just been, I think he got to number two in the UK charts with one of the tracks he just released. Um, not the Beatport charts, the actual major main UK charts. Um, and he's giving me work now. Um, the work I did for Sonic Academy came from somebody I did some sound design with 10 years ago. Uh, so I have been given a lot of work by Sonic Academy because of somebody I knew 10 years ago. Um, and I've got another friend who just did some work for Hans Zimmer on the latest Bond film, who is also, we are giving each other work. Now, without these contacts, I probably would have still made some money, but nothing like the amount that we're, we're firing each other now. I mean, I've probably put four or five people in contact with Chris at Sonic Academy um, for them to do video content for him as well. And this is a two-way street. I get work for other people, they get work for me. Um, I've done sound design work for uh, plugin developers uh, through contacts. You know, I don't approach them directly. It's somebody who's already working for them that I've been in contact with for a few years. And this is crucial. If you want to make a, a, a living out of the music business, and remember what I said at the beginning of the video, this is for those of you who uh, want to make a career. It's not just a hobby. It's not something you want to learn. It's something you want to make money out of. And in some respects, the music itself is just a calling card. You can make money from releasing music, but we all know it's not, it's not easy. But there are so many connected avenues of, of revenue that you can look into. I mean, for me, sound design, tuition, um, I know guys doing one-on-one -on -one tuition. Um, I know uh, guys that do sound design for not only music, but for film and TV. Uh, you can do f music for film and TV. That can actually be quite lucrative if you get good at it. Um, there's engineering, mixing, mastering. There's so many ways that you can make music. And if you think about the amount of 
kids that are turning 15, 16. I mean, most of us start doing it around then, I would imagine. I did even all oh, those years ago. They all need to learn from somewhere. And music, I don't know about your country, but in the UK, music ain't being taught in schools anymore. So it's up to us to provide that education, so to speak. Um, but a lot of this can be quite lucrative. So making the contacts now, don't worry about not being good enough. I, I wasn't good enough. I mean, I could make music, I could play the piano when I first started using software, but there was a lot of gaps in my knowledge back then. But there were some things I did know and that was useful to some of the people that I was in contact with back then and we've all kind of come up together I mean, my contact list is there's people from the ages of people in their early 20s still to people in their 50s like me so um yeah this is this is the big thing is building your network um keeping it a two-way street don't just take from people give back as well and it will pay you back in the future it absolutely will pay you back in the future just trust me on that one Okay, lastly, don't take any of this too seriously, okay? Um, I have seen, last video was about contacts, and I, I've, I've been in contact with a lot of people over the years, and I've seen people get quite moody and depressed and low about um, their success or their workload or their lack of success. They, they attach too much emotion to what they're doing. And I think a lot of this is because this room that we sit in, um, I'm actually using a very high, highly sensitive camera here, but it's quite dark in here. And if you spend too long sitting in a darkened room, staring at a screen, um, basing all of your happiness on the success of what you're doing, you are going to end up miserable. You need to get outside, go and do some exercise, go and meet somebody of the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever it is you like, go and do something else, um, have other hobbies. Uh, just don't base everything off of what you're doing in here while you're learning because it can be at both a very rewarding and a very frustrating pastime or career making music. It is at times extremely difficult and these days we're not just musicians these days we are musicians, we're social media experts, we are producers, we, are, we, we have to take care of um, all the kind of accounting side of things if you're making money. Um, Back in the day, if you're a musician, you got a record deal, they hired a producer, invariably, this is how it used to be, they would hire a producer to polish your crappy demo into something that's releasable and they would do a lot of stuff for you. But it's not like that anymore. And it's very easy to get bogged down in this little dark room or this little dark cubicle you're sitting in and stay up till three in the morning and try and finish that track and then you wake up next day and it sounds like crap. Um, this is why you need a little bit of um, balance in your life. And this is really, really important. So I don't start my day in the studio. I used to. <clears throat> I used to take my kids to school, get straight in the studio and try to work, but I don't do that anymore. Um, I you know, go out for a walk, do something else. And when it comes to lunchtime, if I'm still here doing stuff, I'll stop, I'll switch everything off, go and have some lunch, go and sit in the garden, do whatever I want. Um, get outside. You need you need sunlight and you need exercise and um, I don't want to sound like an old granddad but just make sure you eat right as well <laughs> it's so important this this whole um, idea of sipping Red Bull and staying up till 3 in the morning uh, trust me it runs out pretty quickly um, and it can affect your mental health I'm not saying that you have to be an old fart like me but start taking care of your health now if this is going to be a career for you you know, we're talking about careers. We're not talking about somebody messing around with music for a year. If you want to start making money out of this and you want to spend time in here, you're going to have to sort out your habits. Um, uh, there's one guy I know in particular who I've, I've just done some work for, actually. Uh, he's done some work for me in the past and, you know, contacts. Um, he is, I don't know how old he is, actually. Late 20s, early 30s. He's not very old, but he has some pretty nasty back issues. And this is because he's been doing this monkey fucking a football pose every day for 10 hours for the last three, four, five, six years. Um, and it can catch up with you pretty quickly. Um, so this cubicle, your workspace, if you had a real job, you wouldn't want to spend all your time here, would you? And you, you kind of have to get yourself in that mindset with this as well. 
Um, make sure you get outside. Make sure you exercise. Make sure you have other things to do. Make sure you speak to people in real life, not messaging them on bloody Facebook. Um, just remove yourself from this environment as much as possible. Uh, but when you're in here, work hard, but get out, do other things, exercise, eat, eat right. Not all the time. Sometimes we need pizza, but take care of your physical and mental health as well. Um, the mental health side of things is arguably more important. Um, again, sitting in a dark room, focusing all your attention on one thing that you're basing all of your happiness and success on might not be the best thing for you. Meditation is fantastic. Uh, meditation is fantastic for, and I'm not going to talk a lot about meditation, it's not what you think, uh, it's not about relaxing, it's not about emptying your mind, it's got nothing to do with that. I would urge you to do your own research on it, but it can be a very good tool for keeping you straight and real. Uh, so that's pretty much it, I hope this video was useful, I know I haven't shown you any technical tips, but it's just some of the mindset things I've learned over a, a very long time. Uh, I didn't always get this right, I think I've got it right now, so I um, hope you found it useful and I'll see you guys again soon, cheers. Thanks everyone for watching, we really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video then smash a like and if you want to be notified about new videos hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace!